Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I'm super, super excited you're here to print with me tonight. So tonight we are talking all about the Block Center and how to make an amazing ideas on books, things you can do, studies you can do, how to integrate math, how to integrate science, how to integrate literacy, all the goodness on how to make your block center amazing. So right now I'm standing in my block center. So I want you in the comments, if you have one on your phone, drop a picture of your block center if you have it. Put it in the comments. Or maybe tell me what your favorite thing is in your block center, just so we can kind of start the conversation and you guys can kind of start talking to each other too while I'm live, because we all know, know we learn best from each other. So let's let's support each other during this live too. So real quick, at the top, you're gonna find some links. At the top, there is a link to my Block Center blog post on my blog, and there are freebies on there. So you're gonna wanna make sure after this is over to check that out. There's also a link to my TBT store, to um, my past Facebook Live videos, and the Facebook group, and my favorite things on Amazon that um, I'll show you tonight. So yeah, so all of that is at the top. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you my Block Center first and then we'll sit down and kind of chat. So let me turn it around. So this is my block center, and you're gonna have to excuse my mess. <laughs> um, so I have two shelves in my block center, and my it's this was our first day of school, so this is set up like it's the first day of school. So I have my block center sign with the long, long blocks, and then I have a whole shelf over here with kind of more of the construction, dramatic play-ish type things. And then over here, when I have a big space to build in the middle, I have my other shelf. Let me move my chair, sorry. And this is my other um, blocks center shelf. I have unit blocks and I have cans and I have all kinds of fun things. And then I have some visuals at the top to help my little builders be inspired and get excited. Okay, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and now we're just gonna kind of chat. First things first, like what kind of blocks do you have in your block center? Because you need blocks, right? My favorite blocks, and they're kind of expensive, they're the wood unit blocks. I know Melissa and Doug have some, and you can get them from Discount School Supply and Lakeshore and things like that. Um, but these, I mean, if you have money in your budget or if you can slowly buy um, little sets and kind of put them together, um, I would say these um, wood unit blocks are your best bet. They're the most stable. They're the less, the least frustrating blocks, I think, for builders, um, little builders to use. Um, so somebody is asking where are my shelves from, and the shelves are just from Ikea. They're just those cube cubby shelves. So yeah, so these, I would say, unit blocks are my favorite. Um, and I don't, I don't think I, you can see them right down there. I don't think I have a full set. I think I have maybe like the half set because I didn't buy the gigantic one. So I want to say I have the half set and I have the one without a lot of the weird pieces. Like I don't have a lot of the arches and things like that. I got ones with mostly the um, the squares and the rectangles and the triangles and the circles. So I got more of like a basic pack. You can also get cardboard blocks. I think these are Melissa and Doug ones for any cardboard block works. These are great, but however, as you can see, they do um, get little holes in them and things. Um, and then I know some people put, if you have a smaller um, classroom, maybe you're using Legos or maybe you're using magnet blocks or um, some of those little, the littler wood blocks. And some people are asking about my labels. So all of these labels are in my TPT store. I think it's $8, I think, for the whole pack but there's a ton of them in there. So that's kind of the blocks you wanna use. So, oh, and I, I also have a dollhouse in my block center. So I'm just gonna flip it, maybe you can see it. Let's see. So I also have a dollhouse in my block center and that's from Ikea. So I couldn't fit my dollhouse in my library center due to spacing, so um, I put it in my block center. And it's a really great way to get some of those the, the girls over who are my, sometimes the, the, the reluctant builders, that's a good way to kind of get them over here to the block center. Um, so yeah, so I just have my doll house, house there. But you can also see, because there's lots of oral language there. So let's say you don't have those, you don't have the wood blocks and you don't have cardboard blocks, and you don't really have any Legos or anything like that. 
There's all kinds of other fun things you can use. You can use, like I know everybody's, some people have been asking about these cans. Okay, so these cans are just like canned, like canned veggies and canned fruit. And I, I have a Pampered Chef um, can opener, which makes that really super smooth edge. So you can use like recyclable objects, like you can use cans and I just have, I wash them and then since I have that smooth edge can opener, I can just plop them in and I have different sizes. And when you use different size blocks, I think these are like the tomato paste kind of like size. Um, like you're, they're doing math and they're sorting and they're comparing objects, they're comparing sizes and they're doing 3D shapes. Um, and when you're in blocks, talk about those 3D shapes. Like, oh, grab the cylinder block or grab the, you know, the triangular prism or whatever it is. Like use those big fancy words with kids. Because even though they may not, when they're three, four, and five, they may not exactly know what it is, but when they hear it, at least that seed is planted in their brain. So that way when they go to kindergarten and they're learning all about 3D shapes, then that seed will be planted, they'll have that word in their brain, and then they can put the meaning behind it. So even though they may not know the meaning behind some of these big words we're, te we're teaching them, they'll learn the meaning behind it better because that seed is already planted, so it's already in there. So you can use cans. Um, some of my other things I love to use are, especially like when you're doing like a food theme or your recycling theme or healthy theme, um, whoops, are cereal boxes. And I literally, so I don't, you can't see it right here, but this is my tub. It's just literally a plastic tub. <laughs> uh, this is all like, oh, sorry, hit the camera. So that's all my, oh, hit it again. <laughs> it's all my extra like block center stuff. So, um, so I keep like folded up cereal boxes in there and then I can just unfold them. You can tell there's tape on there and I just tape them back up. And then we now have cereal boxes to build with. So they're usually cheap or free. You can ask parents to donate them or um, you can just collect them. And I have like a ginormous stack, but cereal boxes are also great because there's tons of environmental print on there. Um, so yeah, so use food boxes if you don't have a giant budget for, um, for blocks or if you want to do, if you're doing a grocery store theme or a health theme, like take out some of the blocks and put in some, some, um, some food boxes or cereal boxes and again, put in the different sizes cause they're going to be building with the different sizes. I love these little ones are super cute, um, to build with cause you, they can build in more detail when there's different sizes. Um, and you, another fun recyclable object, as we all know, are just cups. Um, cups are really fun if you're doing a birthday party theme or you're doing an all about me theme. Cups are super, super fun um, to build with. And they're pretty cheap too. Um, I know like my kiddos love and my, my mom and dad um, buy these for my kids all the time. Um, so that like I have a whole bunch of these just because this is what my kids eat a lot at their grand grandma's and grandpa's house so i have my, my mom keep them and then these are really fun to build with and they're great for environmental print and it gets them talking so they're like oh i i like these cookies or i like these chips ahoy or whatever it is so now there's lots of oral language happening too along with them building and when they're building with different materials and different objects they're having to explore different things like they're if they're building with the same thing all year long they're not exploring balance completely. They're not really exploring symmetry completely. Like when you put in different blocks all year long, and I'm not saying like change it up every week, um, but I do I add one new thing to blocks every week. And when I say one new thing, I could add just some road, some road pieces. Like that might be my new thing to blocks. Maybe I'll add different cars. Um, so I add one new thing to blocks every week. So don't, you know, change it huge every week, but do something little every week to keep them on their toes, keep them building, keep them interested, keep them excited. Another fun thing um, that's super cheap to build with too are cardboard. This is actually all the cardboard that my Ikea shelves came in that I have from my classroom. Um, you can just get cardboard boxes and literally cut it up because it's really great for roofs or ceilings or if they are building like skyscrapers and they want to build floors. These work great for that. It's also great for loose parts. Um, and just start small, add a little bit and then see what they do. Maybe, you know, they say, oh, we need tape because they want to build a point. We'll add some tape. And then they can start taping the blocks together. So always change it up. You might see my little puppy wander around back there, just so you know. All right, so 
use either real box or recyclable materials or a combination of both. Um, somebody says, do I allow scissors in the block area? Sometimes I do if they need them and they say, hey, we, you know, we, we want to put these together as a roof and we need to cut the tape, then they can absolutely go get the scissors for that. But I really don't keep scissors in the block area just because I have three-year-olds and sometimes they may cut things that shouldn't be cut. <laughs> um, it really depends on your class. You'll have to kind of feel them out. If you have kinders, you can probably have scissors in the block area with no problems. So cardboard blocks, or cardboard in general, <laughs> is fun for the block center. Um, another thing that is fun, I'm looking for it, sorry. Fun in the block center that's super cheap is like foam board. And this is like a textured foam board that I got, I want to say from the Dollar Tree like five, ten years ago, like forever ago. Um, but if you don't, if you can't find this, and I haven't seen this in a long time, um, you can always just grab, grab regular foam board or add felt. Felt is really fun too because felt they can manipulate and like make bumps and hills with. And felt is really fun because if you get brown, it can be like dirt. Or they can make caves. Sorry, my... My can lights are making me glow. <laughs> or maybe you have green grass they want to build for their animals or maybe you're, do maybe you're doing pond and then they could use the blue foam for the ocean. Maybe you're doing Arctic and it's winter. Put in some white, you can see mine. <laughs> I've had it for a while, it's a little dirty. Um, I do wash it every once in a blue moon though. Um, you can put in some white. I did fine, we did, um, Michael's has silver and this is like sparkly foam so that's really fun if you're doing like a space theme you can put in some um, sparkly glittery foam boards um, that's really fun for the block center and something different oh here's some gold ones we I got like doesn't that look inviting I mean I want to build with this so that's and fun and then obviously when you're building you're gonna build different things so you're gonna build bridges and roads and all different kinds of things. So with my theme, um, I usually put out different things based on our theme. So if right, right now it's back to school, so it's kind of all about me. So I just have some community vehicles in and my vehicles change based on my theme. Like maybe we're doing community helpers and maybe I'm just gonna have all the community helper um, vehicles in there. Maybe we're doing transportation, so maybe I'll put like a whole bunch of Hot Wheel cars in there. Um, Maybe you're doing construction. Put a whole bunch of construction vehicles in there. Um, <coughs> I know um, the vehicles can get expensive. I know if you watch the Dollar Tree, they have some. Like one year they had a whole bunch of like garbage trucks. So I bought like 10 <laughs> garbage trucks and re like the recycling trucks. And now I have a whole bunch of garbage and recycling trucks when we do like an earth theme or um, like a recycling theme. So that's really fun. I know some people are asking about my shirt. And it is from, I will drop the link when I'm done, but it's the right, the right start chicks. So I will drop a link for my shirt when I'm done. I just got it like a couple weeks ago and I love it. Um, so yeah, so change out your vehicles based on your theme. If you're doing trans, maybe you're doing a plane theme, put in some planes. If you're doing a boat theme or a summer theme, put in some boats. Um, and it doesn't have to be really expensive stuff. Like I got these um, one year, I think at Target on clearance. And it was, um, these were in the, um, the, like the sand toy aisle, you know, that summer aisle they have, and they have those plastic boats that are like, what, 50 cents a dollar a piece or something. So put some of those in and, and these, these hold up great. I think I've had these for like ever too, like at least, at least eight years. I think I've had these. So, so just, you know, slowly build your collection, buy what's cheap, what's on sale, check your Goodwill stores, things like that. Where do I store all my stuff? So I actually have three of these, these size tubs for my block center. Um, and I keep it in the back room and I'll put a classroom tour um, link at the bottom or you can check the old Facebook Live post. But I have a big storage area behind me and I just have three of those and I have one of vehicles, I have a tub of animals and I have a tub of, of like random things. A random things for block center, which is kind of what's right next to me. Um, so you can also add a kind of along the lines of people you want to, or along the lines of vehicles, you want to add people. And people I think are kind of expensive. Um, I know Lakeshore has some that are really nice and they're diverse. So you always want to make sure 
just like with the books in our classroom, the people you have in your classroom, you wanna make sure they reflect the kiddos that you have in your classroom because they wanna see themselves in the books. They wanna see themselves in the toys and in the dolls and things like that. So make sure your dolls reflect the kiddos that you have in your classroom. Um, I can't reach the set I have right now, but I have like a dollhouse set. It's actually by the dollhouse, but you can put dollhouse um, people in the block center. Um, I like to do me blocks too, and they're just on Jenga blocks. And I, the first day of school, I take a full body picture of my kiddos, and then I print them off. I think it's nine to a page. Um, I print them off nine to a page, and I laminate them, and then I just tape it on, like kind of like all the way around. And then I have me blocks, so then all the kiddos in my class can find themselves and they can build with their friends, they can make little things, and the, these are really great conversation starters and especially it gets those, some of those reluctant builders building because of course, who wouldn't want to build with themselves, right? They're so egocentric at this age. Um, so how do I clean my toys? So I, I use, you know, the three-step process just like with anything. Obviously, if there's a big chunk of something, I'll wash that off and then I just use the three-step process to clean out my toys. I put lots of it in the dishwasher if I can. If it can go in the dishwasher, it will go in the dishwasher. Um, with blocks, I have just sprayed them, you know, with um, with like bleach or soapy water and things like that. You can like line up your wood blocks and spray them lightly and clean them that way. Um, I've had to do that in the past, you know, in the winter when you everyone is super, super sick or, you know, you get some of those illnesses in your classroom. Um, so yeah, so just clean everything and then put it back up. But yeah, anything that goes in the dishwasher, I absolutely throw in the dishwasher. Um, so we talked about changing out your vehicles based on your theme. We talked about um, having people in the different kinds of blocks, using recyclable materials. Now I want to talk about adding literacy to the block center. So we all we already talked about if you add um, like recyclable materials, they'll have environmental print that way. And you can also add signs to your block center and you can add the typical I actually just got these this year your typical like block center signs I think these are from discount school supply um, you can add those oops <laughs> those typical ones um, or and I forgot to put a link but these are a freebie on my blog and it's in the community if you go to my blog um, www.pocketofpreschool.com and search community helpers um, in the community helpers post, I have these different um, kind of community blocks. And again, I just laminated them and taped, um, taped them to a jingle block. And I made these last year and they were out probably almost, I think I put them out around October and they, they've held up pretty good. Cause I have, you know, I have threes, like I have rough kiddos, <laughs> like it happens. So they've held up pretty good. I mean, my guess is they'll last about like five years and I'll have to, you know, make, put in some new ones. Um, but yeah, all the different places and there's, when they're making these signs, then you're adding literacy because you're adding that word along with the picture. So they can build their community with all the community blocks. And again, these are a freebie on my blog. I'll drop the link when I'm done. You can also add... So in my STEM, in my TPT store, I have these um, packs. They're called STEM I Can Build. Here it is. And there's, it's a bundle. So there's, this is like the basic pack. And then there's one for every season. And, and there's, um, the seasons have themes in them. Like the, the fall one has fall and Halloween and Thanksgiving and school in it. So that way you can put up challenges based on the theme. And it has teacher direction pages, but what I love, and just different ways you can use it, what I love in the pack is that it has blueprint pages. And you can see them right behind me. There's blueprint pages. And they don't build, they don't really draw them in the square. They just kind of draw over them, and that's totally fine. There's also sketch pages. If you go to the top of this post and go to the block center post, there's also a freebie of some sketch pages but it just gets them drawing um, what they're building. And they can draw before, they can draw after, um, but it's kind of that beginning of engineering. And I know a lot of um, kinders, they, they draw before and then they build and then they um, reflect afterwards. And our, our preschoolers, it just it stems gonna just look a little bit different. So they may not draw before, build, and then reflect after. They may only draw before, 
they may only draw after they may just they may just verbally reflect on it and talk about it it's just it just it's gonna look a little bit different and obviously their drawings aren't gonna be as detailed as a kindergartner they're gonna look like a three-year-old three-year-olds might have a skip a scribble ish um blueprint whereas like a you know a four-year-old might have something that resembles what they actually are building um and then i keep a oops i keep a binder right behind it and that way hope you can see here some from last year um you can tell probably this is probably like a three-year-old and i'm guessing this is probably like a four-year-old so you can see they are drawing what they're building and I usually um, have these pre-hole punched so I can pop it in, but obviously I didn't even realize those were in here since this is um, the first day back to school. Um, but like here's another one. And you can tell these two buddy planned it together and it looks some, like some kind of like spaceship thing. So yeah. And they can do it together, they can do it alone. But if you have the paper in your block center and you have, I just have a little bucket of red, um, markers next to it so that way they can draw um, what they're building or what they want to build. So, and then on the other side of my block center, I have these little mini um, like caddies. These are from the dollar store and I just have crayons and markers in them. And then right next to it on the shelf are these, I have mini clipboards and it just has blank paper. It's nothing fancy, it's literally Mini clipboards, I think they're from like Office Max and a tub from like Walmart or the dollar store, but it fits them perfect. Then they can use these to make signs. They can use them to draw their buildings. They can use them to make lists of what they need. Um, they will use these for all kinds of things um, that maybe you wouldn't even think of, but if the writing materials are, are out and they're available, they're more likely to use them. And now you're adding lots of literacy and lots of um, fine motor because they're drawing too. So yeah, so just put out some mini clipboards and put out a little mini bucket of supplies or um, you can put out colored pencils if you're a kinder teacher. Um, yeah. And then I also have, and this is a freebie in that blog post at the top, the cover is. Um, I also, and I do have permission to show these photos too, just so you know. Um, I keep photos of my kids' buildings. And yes, they are full page color. And so I have some of my kids two years in a row. So I keep them for two years. And then when they leave me, then I'll send them home. <laughs> um, but that way they, I have stuff in there that they can kind of reflect on. But look at this. Like, these friends are building a cup tower. And then these guys, they built some kind of, it looks like a construction site. And then they're, so they use the cardboard blocks and then they have a long line. Oh, you see their little construction, some construction site and they got all the vehicles lined up and they have some road tape and they have some animals behind them. So that way they can look at each other's buildings and maybe get inspired that way. Cause they learn so much more from each other than they do from us. And on the wall, I always have these STEM I can build, build card based on our theme. And they're on a clip. I just, I stapled the ribbon to the wall. That way we can pull them off. Cause I really would love to have these. Ideally, I would love to have them lower, um, but I just can't in this classroom. It just doesn't work because I use this wall for other, for um, things. So. I, um, let me find it. So, at the beginning of the year, when I introduced the Block Center, which I forgot to go grab that book, which I'll have to go get in just a second, we make a chart of all the different things they can build. And this is the one from last year, which you can see it's missing one, and I actually keep this posted on this wall, and I just clip it to my blinds. I try and use it as best as I can as a bulletin board. Oh, the small clipboards, I just have them out. Somebody said they missed that part. So the small clipboards, I just have out so they can use them for drawing their building. They can use it for sketching it out before. They can use it to make a list of things they need. They can use it for sign making. Um, they can kind of use it for whatever they want. So at the beginning of the year, I read a book, which I will go grab in just a minute. And then we talk about all the different things they can build because if I have, 
But if they help me make this chart, one, it puts meaning behind the, the thing that's on the wall. Um, and two, it's real photos. So then they will walk up to the wall. They will walk up to the poster during, um, throughout the year during center time and they'll look at it and they'll notice it. Sometimes they talk with a friend, sometimes they just look at the pictures and notice things and then they build. So, or maybe I can use it as a reference. So maybe they're like, oh, I built a city. And I'd be like, oh, you did? Oh, I like how, and, and I'll maybe compare their building to the one in the picture. Like, oh, like, I like how yours has three buildings and they're different heights. And look, in this city, that one has buildings with different heights. Or, or oh, did you see on top of these buildings how the, some of them come to a point? Is there a block you could use that is pointy at the top? That way some of your buildings could have points. Or would you want your buildings to have points? Or maybe to kind of like extend their thinking and to extend their block play um, and things like that. So you can use it all different ways. And I once we make it, I keep it in the block center all year long. And um, yeah, it's, it's my kiddos use it as a resource and I promise you they do. <laughs> my three-year-olds will even walk up to it and they'll look at it. They may, and like I said, some of the times the three-year-olds, you know, sometimes they, they're not a lot of language um, and they think more everything in their brain sometimes. Um, they'll just think about it and then they'll build or maybe they'll look at it and then go back to their building. So a lot of times their thinking isn't out loud. Sometimes it's just all an observation. So that usually is on my wall, but it's the first day of school. So we haven't made our chart yet. And then we'll make them for different themes. So like here's one we made last year, excuse me, on Valentine's. So all the different things they can do for Valentine's and I'll put out different props to help make it. Maybe I'll put out some red buttons or maybe I'll put out some fake roses um, and different things that way they can build what's in the picture. Um, here's one and all of these are in my stem. I can build pack. Um, here's one on the winter so that way they, they're building if they're building the same thing over and over and over they're not having to change their thinking they're you know building the same thing there's you know not once you do something over and over and over there's not a lot of critical thinking involved and problem solving because it's, it's just the same thing so if you extend their thinking and maybe inspire them to put out new things by putting out themed I can build props and putting out um, different props for different themes It'll um, make them problem solve and get that thinking going a little bit more. And here's one if you do holidays. Here's one for a Christmas theme. And then here's another one we did last year for um, a fall theme. So all the different things we could build in the fall. And maybe um, for the fall I put out some, maybe some apple counters or maybe I put out some real mini pumpkins or some tractors or maybe some fake flowers. Or it's maybe some, I just, um, a lot of times I'll cover blocks in like a piece of paper. So maybe just cover some blocks in yellow paper and these can be hay bales. Um, cover your block in foil and it can be like an iceberg or an ice chunk. <laughs> um, you know, cover your blocks and they can be different things. It doesn't have to be all these fancy things from Lakeshore. Like you just cover your block and then look, now you got a hay bale. And now they're using that ima imaginative play because it's not a real object. They're having to pretend it's a hay bale because it isn't really a hay bale. Um, a lot of my props I buy at the dollar store um, and I just use over and over and over um, like pine cones because I'm allergic <laughs> to everything outside. So I, I, so I totally cheat and buy all my nature things from the dollar store. Um, so these were like ornaments, pine cone ornaments and um, I just cut off the top so then I have pine cones that are clean <laughs> and don't have nature in them to make me sneeze. Um, and yeah, all the stem I can build packs are in my TBT store. Um, in the spring, you can tell I never have put these all the way away. <laughs> these were just sitting in the top of my bucket. These are just some tulips I got from the dollar store and I just cut off the, um, the stems. Just of some fake flowers for the spring. Here's just another bucket of fake flowers from the dollar store and I just pulled off the top. Um, Cause if these are sitting on your shelf, like doesn't that look inviting? Like don't you wanna build with that? Like how much fun is that? Maybe they're gonna build this big beautiful garden and maybe they're gonna sort the colors as they build 
in the block center or maybe they're going to sort it by kinds of flowers. Maybe you're going to put out veggie counters. I do love putting out um, math counters in the block center. I don't put out the whole bucket. Maybe just like a handful, maybe like 10, 15. But it's great because they can um, use the little things like if you have those little veggie math counters, um, you can put those out and maybe they'll make rows of vegetables and they're, maybe they're building a farm. Um, my tractors, so my tractors are actually my kids' old toys. <laughs> um, I do take some of my kids' toys for different themes, um, but I got those on Amazon. If you go to the top of this post, the link is at the top. Okay, so Brittany's asking where do I find all my crafting, my nature things. Here's a big bucket of leaves. These are all from the dollar store. So literally, I take the tops and put them in here, and then I don't throw away the leaves, and I just... I make this at the beginning of the year when I introduce my block center and then the books I use, actually went and grabbed them, are this one. This is one of my favorite books. It says, When I Build with Blocks, and it's on Amazon. And it just has this little guy and girl in the block center and they are building different things and they're pretending um, with the blocks. But I like it because it's kind of got the unit blocks in it and it has them using their imagination. So it's actually like kiddos in a preschooler, or in a preschool building with blocks and they're using their imagination. So I love using this one to introduce the block center. And um, after we read this, then we um, brainstorm this giant chart of all the different things we can build and then we post it and this stays in the center all year long and then another one of my favorite books to introduce the block center if you can't find this one um jack the builder is also another really super cute one it's about this little guy and he is building with his blocks and then he counts them and then he uses imagination and he pretends that there's something else so that's really really fun again so again this one is jack the builder it's one of those math start books and then the other one is when I build with block. Um, and then another one, another book I love um, for introducing the block center from the, um, for the beginning of the year and when you're doing that, like that all about me, that family, is this book, Homes in Many Cultures. This one is also awesome, awesome because it's got lots of different types of homes um, in different cultures and in different places around the world. So that way, um, just like with the books, um, with the books in the, in the dollhouse people, we want our kiddos to see their homes and we want them to see themselves in the books we're using. So make sure you're using diverse books too. This one's a super cute one too for introducing the block center. Um, it's dreaming up and, um, it has, I like it because it has a illustration and then it has the real photograph of the building. So that's really, really cool. I just got this one this summer, um, but here's what they're building and it shows kind of the different materials and then here it is in a real photograph. So this is a really, um, another awesome one too. It's called Dreaming Up. Some of the text is long, but you know, kind of like we do, um, we just kind of shorten it as we read and then, um, then read it as a class and use those pictures to kind of guide your teaching for that book. Um, yes, and then I also love, if you don't wanna grab the stem, I can build pack. Um, I also love using calendars um, in my block center. Like this is a, the back of a calendar. And um, and yes, those the links for the book should be on my favorite, um, my favorite things post. Um, so yeah, so check that out on Amazon. Um, but this is a just a castle calendar and this is great for fairy tales. And then here's a calendar I have that was just all of bridges. And then like here's a calendar I had that was roller coasters. So that's a great one for ramps or for STEM. Um, and then another thing that happens in blocks, right? Like they always wanna knock everything over, right? So, and I will, I don't think I put the links at the top of the second one because I was just trying to get, get this to work again. So I'll drop all the links back at the end of this one or you can check the other post. Um, but I like to read this book, Bam, Bam, Bam. And then we talk about ways to knock over in a safe way. So maybe they're building a tower and it's as big as them. And 
maybe they're just crashing through it because that's really exciting, right? Like to crash through a building, it's a big loud sound, but it's not safe. Like if they crashed into somebody else, if the blocks fell on somebody's head, like that isn't good. So I always think about how can they do what they want to do, but in a safe way. So one year I had kiddos that were crashing big, big, big time in blocks and I couldn't get around it. So um, I had them, I can't grab my hammer right now, but we had a challenge to see whose block could withstand them as how many taps. So we put a poster on the wall and after they built their building, they tapped the top of their block structure with a hammer and they had to count to see how many taps it would take to knock down. And we had rules, like they had to clear the space when they were doing this. Everybody had to have a plastic hard hat on um, and nobody could be sitting. So that way it was a safe way to knock over. And we were adding math and science because if they're tapping and knock down, then they put it on the chart and it was literally like a poster board, like laminated. So they just wrote it on there, how many taps it took. And then they could compare, like did it take a lot of taps or a little bit of taps? And then we, we could talk about it like, why why did your building fall down so soon why why did it take forever like wh what do we notice about this building so it was a really great discussion starter about how to build strong and about having um strong foundations in our buildings and things so it was a great way to knock down but to add some learning and to let them do what they wanted to do but in a super super safe way um yeah so super simple and then um another since we're on the topic of books I also love this book, it's called Cross a Bridge, and it just has all different bridges in it. And again, the text is a little bit long, but um, I just love it because it has all different bridges. Because one year we did a whole like month on just bridges in the block center because they loved building bridges. Um, so these, everybody's asking about these road stripes and I can't remember if I told you about them or not or if that's when the video cut out. So these road stripes, are it's just road tape on black cardstock that's it and then i laminated it because i used to put the road tape on the ground but then it was hard to peel it left that sticky residue i know some of you can't put tape on the ground so just take that road tape put it on black um cardstock and then laminate it and then you've got a whole bunch i think this is like one roll and I got mine at the Target dollar spot. I know you can get it on Amazon. So on the topic of roads, I love this book. It's called Road Builders. And it talks about building a road because there's a lot more to building a road than just to lay the blocks out. Like they have to, you know, make the ground level and things like that and put the gravel down and use the different machines and things like that. A lot of my books I buy off Amazon or a lot of them I find like in Scholastic. Like I think all of these are Scholastic. Um, yeah, a lot of my books I just, I bought over the years through Scholastic or Amazon. Um, yeah, that's where I get a lot of my books. Um, and I, once I find good ones, I read them over and over and over. They're kind of like, they come to be like my tried and true favorites. Um, so before the video cut off, um, I was also talking about one other thing you need in the Block Center. You need a way for them to use imaginative play. And what better way to imagine and do some pretend play in the Block Center than to be a construction worker? And you can buy the expensive Melissa and Doug vest. I finally did that last year. But you can just get simple hard hats from the dollar store usually, or sometimes the Target dollar spot has them, or watch kind of around Halloween. Um, and you can grab some and if you don't have the money to grab those expensive construction vests, I know Ikea has some, I think, for like five bucks each. Just go to Home Depot. And this is what I used all up until this year when I finally bought some nice vests um, for my class because it just wasn't in the budget. Um, but after teaching 11, you know, this is my 13th year, I finally have a lot of things. So I um, bought some of those nice construction vests. But... Um, these are just a dollar from Home Depot and they have worked and the kids love them and they just wrap them around and they use them as a little tool belt and they have big pockets and they work awesome. So it's, you can have a cool block center um, on a budget and these um, I had Home Depot donate to me. That's for their little their workshops that they do. So maybe you can ask or maybe a parent has some. Um, you can ask them to donate those to you. Um, you can get tools like this levels from the dollar store and has a ruler on it 
Um, my toolbox is from the dollar store. Um, and a lot of my, this one's, this is a hammer they would use to not do the tapping challenge because it had kind of a soft edge. Um, this is like a like a baby one, but you can just use a regular hammer. A lot of my tools I find in the Target dollar spot. You can get them usually um, after after Christmas, like in the like in the clearance section a lot. You can see them, or maybe a parent has some. You can ask for donations. Um, but these the toolbox is from the the dollar store. You can also put in paint cans. Oh, somebody said they wouldn't donate them anymore. Oh, it's probably because all of us teachers are asking for them. Um, but yeah, but you can just buy the aprons then. But I just bought these at either Home Depot or Lowe's. They're just empty paint cans. So they're clean. <laughs> they're not dirty. And then there's a, I have a small and a large, like I do everything else. So that way they're talking about sizes during their play. Like, oh, I want the small paint jar. I want the big one. Um, and then I just laminated... Um, I laminated paint samples because now they're talking about colors. Um, it adds conversation. It adds vocabulary. Oh, I want the lighter. I want the lighter pink. Oh, I want the darker pink. Oh, I want the purple. Um, if you're doing kinder and you're doing STEM, have them write down the color word that they want their building to be at the end if they're designing it um, to add some literacy. Um, and then I just threw in some uh, dollar store. Um, some bait brushes from the dollar store, super simple. So that's a great easy way to add imaginative play. Oh, and cones. You can put some cones out. These are from the dollar store too. The dollar store is an amazing, amazing resource um, for the block center because you can make awesome things super cheap um, and build up your block center pretty quick. Um, so yeah, so that is all about the block center in my classroom. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Bye.